When I was invited to speak at this, I thought, holy Christopher, they're really bringing back my youth. And I felt really good when I thought about it. I was born here in this, in the, in this area. And I can honestly say I was one of the travelers by train. I was raised in a large family, and we lived in Sault Ste. Marie. However, my parents didn't own a vehicle. And every summer and on most holidays, my older sister and I would take the train to visit Dad's family who lived in the Blind River area. Now, my mother's family lived in the Sioux, and Grandpa worked for the CN Railway for all his years in employment. And during my career with the Royal Canadian Air Force, I traveled by train from Nova Scotia back home to the Sioux. Although it was a long trip, I had sleeping quarters. The journey was scenic, restful, and I also had an opportunity to meet many people. My grandfather retired from the rail in the early 60s. He said that with technology evolving so rapidly, we'd see the railway becoming more and more obsolete as other modes of transportation were being developed, as well as the roadways. And as a young adult, I thought, how foolish. That, that can't be correct because we all know that the, we all knew the railway was one of the earliest and greatest material achievements of the era. However, he was right. And we saw that our link to that mode of transportation was removed. And someone just mentioned, Mark mentioned something about the accidents. And that too really hit me just now. I had a bit of, my husband and I, when we retired, thought we'd like to have a small hobby farm on the Mississauga River. So we raised miniature horses there for 10 years. And I got to know a family. And the little boy, there were two little boys in that family who had no grandparents, so they started to call my husband and I, Grandma and Grandpa. One day, there was a transport coming through town carrying heavy coils of steel. Those steel coils rolled off that truck and killed the mother and the child. So it was very, very hard to lose one of the only neighbors I had and a, and a special little grand boy. But life goes on, as we say. Grandpa finally did retire, and I, I think that um, most of you here are aware that here across the northern region, we have more older adults than anywhere else in this province. However, due to our longevity, our medical issues are much more acute. And at oftentimes here in the region, although we have, we're fortunate to have new facilities, our ministry funding does not provide us with sufficient dollars to staff appropriately, thus causing many of us to be transferred out of the area for medical assessment and or treatment. My friends will leave for Toronto tomorrow morning for medical care, so I call to wish them a safe journey. And Jean remarked, I hope, you're not too, I hope we're not too stiff to get out of the car when we get there. Therefore, it's so important that we have enough licensed medical support people, especially those with geriatric training available to look after the elderly. Our, excuse me. Often when our loved ones are transferred to larger facilities like Sudbury, Ottawa, Toronto, or London, it's hard to accept. I'm not talking now just about older adults, but young children as well. My granddaughter had to be transferred to Ottawa when she was eight years old. We were very grateful that she could get the care that she needed. However, having her such a long, long distance away, only one family member could afford to stay in Ottawa with her until she was well enough to come home. Many older adults are being discharged from hospitals as quickly as possible in order to free up acute care beds. And due to the shortage of long-term care beds, the last count I heard, we had 2,700 people on waiting lists for long-term care beds. Unfortunately, some seniors are transferred to long-term care beds in other regions. It's a policy that if a bed is available, you take the first bed. Often the spouse and other loved ones are unable to visit with them on a daily basis. And due to the lack of transportation, 
It could be lack of transportation or expenses that cause this, but it often frustrates and causes a lot of anxiety for, for the person who is now forced to live in an area with people he doesn't even know. We often hear of older adults who have no children living close to home. In many cases, the children often have to move to a larger center to find suitable employment. So growing old alone becomes a concern. Most of us don't have the energy to drive a long distance without making a few stops along the way to ensure proper body circulation and driving and maintaining a car is very expensive. Many seniors live on limited income. A few years back, men were the principal wage earners in the family. Very few wives worked. <coughs> Wages were not like they are today, and many employers offered no pension plan. So their old age pension checks have to go a long way to cover the rent, hydro, and other increasing costs on a daily basis. Local bus transportation comes in handy. However, for seniors with mobility issues to travel a long distance by bus is very uncomfortable. With our children and grandchildren residing out of town, it would be so nice to say, this weekend I'm heading to Thessalon, Blind River, Sudbury, Toronto, just to visit the children. Or today I'd like to visit a loved one in a hospital out of town or just take a vacation, north, east, or west. But that luxury of a relaxing and affordable accommodation by train was removed from us. Our politicians thought everyone had a car and could afford their own transportation, I guess. When seniors are traveling any distance, washroom breaks are necessary. However, many public facilities have signs that say washrooms are for paying customers only. So you buy a coffee and a few more miles down the road, you're looking for another stop. <laughs> My neighbor has a cottage that he and his family used to enjoy every summer. He said it's on Old Blake, mile 215. Since the train stoppage, the family has not been able to use that cottage as the only way into the property is by railway. However, he's still required to pay his annual taxes. As an elder, I'm asking that together we support the Northeast Ontario Rail Network's vision and help recapture a sustainable approach and supporting economic opportunity for not only us, but ultimately everyone in the North. Let us always remember not only railways, let us always remember that only railways can carry anything, almost anywhere, and do it with little regard for weather conditions. Hopefully, this rail summit will provide us an opportunity to speak out in one voice and fight for the right to live with dignity and respect and not be forced to live with limitation imposed on us by our government officials or people in power. Thank you.